All right, hello everybody, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends, and don't forget to download the video right after we finish. Today, our topic about money, money, money. It's a song we heard a long time ago from a team. It's called ABBA. Money, money, money. Mm -hmm. Now, why people sing for money? Why people, they worship money? The answer is very simple. Money, what we learn from this life, that by money we can get things we need, and even more than what we need. By money we can enslave people, we can control, we can be rulers, we can be kings, we can be whatever we like to be. We can destroy life, we can save life, we can take life. Money do a lot. And the human being understood what money is about. And this is why the whole world is running after money. However, religion is no different. Religion, and hardly you can find something that's called religion, is not connected to money. What Jesus our Lord, he said about money. Is he a person who encouraged us to save money? Uh, to save a treasure for tomorrow? He said, look at the birds. Who they have no worry. The birds, you know, they don't... You know, they don't have really uh, storages of... Uh, money and security they are birds they live for today they go and pick up some food and bring it to their babies so we have totally different messages in christianity from what islam speak about the messiah he said that you cannot worship two masters You cannot worship two masters. You cannot work for both. Work for both here mean you know you serve who? You cannot serve two masters. For they don't match. The money and God they don't match. And that is clear what he meant. That either you are with God, you serve God, or you serve money. The second you serve money, you are not serving God. And that's mean that God and enemy, they are not in the same, uh, let us say, direction. It is two opposite direction. But this is not the scenario in Islam. In Islam, you serve Allah when you serve money. And today we will focus in this issue. Now, there is many verses in the Bible speaking, Jesus speaking about that money will not help you, money will not save you, etc. And, you know, uh, uh, but it, the clear message is you cannot serve two masters. The second you are a person who is after money, you have a master, and that master is the money. In Islam, the story is different. In Islam, Allah Himself, He need money. Allah Himself, he promised heaven for those who give him money. Now, for sure, Allah is not a, not a person who exists. Allah is a fake God. Who is the one who will get the money? That's Muhammad. So Muhammad, he convinced the Muslims that if you give me money, you are giving a mortgage to Allah. And he was using his God, as always, for the sake of generation of generating money. So Muhammad, you know, uh, uh, and this is very smart, by the way. Uh, this very, very smart and very evil at the same time. So you do, you will not say, okay, I am the one is asking you to give me. Uh, no, it's Allah. You know, I am just I'm telling you what Allah said. So now you are not just uh, thinking about making a donation to Muhammad. No, it's it's a. The, don't you want to save yourself? Do you want to save yourself or not? So you have to give a mortgage to Allah. And Allah will pay you back in heaven. 
and who is the one will collect the money it is Muhammad and Muhammad he keep using that all over uh, uh, the Quran even he was asking the Jews that you should give me money too because uh, God he order you to to give money to the to the messengers you have to support them with money you see here the translation says and then my messenger to support them but in fact it says and we gave Allah a kindly loan so by giving the messengers money you are giving Allah a kindly loan okay why Allah don't give the messengers loan can't Allah sponsor his messengers chapter 57 verse number 11 he who lend Allah a godly loan a goodly loan Allah will double it for him and he will reach him in reward Allah will make you rich just give him the money Allah he is in need and he is begging for money again who is the one who will collect the money Muhammad the Muslim they might say to you oh this is a charity Wait, well, hold on I mean charity you don't keep saying uh, it's just say keep it you give it charity give it charity and that's it give it to the poor don't give it to Muhammad if you see somebody is poor feed him Jesus says if somebody asks you give him if I ask you for uh, for your coat you know give him your dress and here this is about helping the needy not just giving people well, your stuff I mean we are not crazy people you go in street somebody says give me your coat and then Muhammad he go farther with giving money to the point he claimed that if you give him money Allah will not only reward you in heaven but he will grant you forgiveness do you see it and here we need to ask ourselves can we can we bribe God like now if you gave the nation to Christian Prince God will forgive you from your sin that is silly that is really silly what forgiveness have to do with giving money to somebody you cannot bribe God you will be forgiven for reasons in Christianity when the Lord he taught us how to pray they ask him how to pray he says say like this our father out of heaven and there is something important in that prayer where he says forgive to us the same as we forgive to others so the first reasoning for forgiveness in Christianity is we forgive to others so we might be forgiven not because we give money you know what I mean in order to be forgiven by the Messiah by our Lord the first condition is to forgive you don't deserve forgiveness why I want to forgive you if you don't even forgive to others you don't deserve it so you are asking me to forgive you but you don't want to treat the same people like I mean uh, uh, somebody hurt you forgive him you hurt me you asked me to forgive you so you don't forgive why I will forgive you not is because of you paid money to Jesus you will be forgiven what Muhammad here is saying that if you give me money Allah will grant you forgiveness Allah will grant you this forgiveness and that you know obviously is far away from the truth and Muhammad always he used to uh, uh, to scare people uh, to make them pay money you know he is a uh, he is a professional scammer if you remember when Muhammad he made a speech to the women saying to them I saw that most of you are going to be in hellfire what was the solution how those women they can be saved from hellfire according to Muhammad very simple give uh, give alms all those hadith says the same give Muhammad money give him your earring hmm? give him your earring give him your money
if you give Muhammad money, then you women you will not go to heaven. You will not go to hell. All those references in the front of us. Muhammad right away he says, Oh women, most of you are going to go to hellfire. So give alms. Give alms to who? To Muhammad. And Bilal, he start collecting the earring and the rings of those women. Golden earring, silver earring, golden rings from those poor women because Muhammad, he convinced them that most of you are going to go to hellfire. So give us your earring. Give us your earring if you don't want to go to hellfire. And Muhammad here, actually, he confirmed that women, they are, you know, uh, half a brain. And one of the reasons they are going to go to hell for they are half a brain. And because she have her period, which is very stupid. Very stupid. Uh, and the whole purpose of this speech is to make women give their earring and their rings scaring them saying to them you will end in hellfire so you want to be saved give us your money now if muhammad he saw that the majority of women they will go to hellfire what giving earring will do to the women is that it changed her no you see the you see the sick mentality you see that what's wrong with this uh, logic let us say Muhammad he saw us we are a group of people sitting here and he says oh I saw that most of you will go to hellfire and then he says give us your arms what does that mean just by giving you some earring and rings we will not go to hellfire now nothing changed on us we are still the same we did not change the way we do things. Women, they're still women. They still have their period. So why they will go to hell? They will not go to hellfire no more if we give their earring. Simply because if you give your earring, now you are. Uh, Muhammad, he uh, grant you forgiveness. That's it. There is a hadith I'm trying to find. Let me see. Why Jesus did not say, if you give me your money, then you are going to be forgiven you know forgiven why jesus did not have the same uh, logic you know if the muslim they say that jesus which is a isa for them which is a really wrong name uh that christians and jews they have the same god so why in the god of islam if you give some money you are going to go to heaven and you give it to the prophet but if you give it to uh, uh, you know if you don't give then you go to hell and why women they will go to hell just because they have their period because they have half a brain you know if the women have their period that's mean if that if that is a defect in religion that's what muhammad said a defect in the religion so if this is a defect in religion isn't it allah who made them with the period and since when having a period will make you a bad person look here what happened in this hadith here he commanded them to fear Allah. Why? Because he said to them, in the beginning, he was walking with Bilal, his, his slave, and then he says to the women, directly speaking to women, then he moved away, and he went to the women, and Bilal was with him. Bilal is the money back. He is a slave who collect money from those who Muhammad he scam. He commanded them to fear Allah and 
ex ex exhorted them and remind them he praised and glorified Allah and he urged them to obey Allah and then he said give it charity for most of you are the fuel of hell a lowly woman with dark uh, spot in her cheeks said why messenger of Allah we are going to go to hell he said you complain a great deal and you are ungrateful for your husband and then the women they started uh, taking off their necklace earring and rings throwing them to Bilal do you see it so he scared those women those poor women and you are going to go to hell you are the fuel of hellfire and right away those poor women they start grabbing their necklace their earring their rings and they throw it into Muhammad in the garment of Bilal this is a very well-known strategy by all cult leaders if you listen to there's many TV stations they claim to be Christians uh, Christian stations they are the same as Muhammad call right now call right now and make a donation receive the blessing of God call right now like if you don't call right now you will not receive the blessing of God you know like now you know you call now and you make a donation now all right so always uh, uh, fake people they try to convince you that if you give us money God forgive you as if he is saying to you you can bribe God but that's not true nobody can bribe God we have a brother here he posted a verse from the Bible uh, yeah actually he just posted a verse for us you guys you can read it in Psalm 49 thank you for that verse so you cannot bribe God you cannot uh, uh, Earn forgiveness by giving money to someone he claimed that he is the one who present God and here Muhammad if you think about it when those poor women they are Bedouin women poor women they start taking their earring do you know what is that what what those earring and the uh, you know jewelries they have for them I mean this is their saving at that time people they don't have really I mean there is no bank there's no this will, this is the saving of the women the husband he married her he when he in before the marriage they buy her he buy her some jewelries based on what he afford he can afford and then she wear it all and she she live with it she sleep with it because she there is no security you know there is not like you know houses is the door you can push it with your foot if there's a door actually so those women this is their security this is their saving and now you see he is targeting women as just because you are a woman you are guilty he didn't say oh men he's talking to women and those poor women they start throwing their earring and their rings here we notice Muhammad used the strategy of fear the strategy of fear is very simple that you are going to go to hellfire and if you don't do that which means give me money you will go guaranteed but if you give me the money then you might go to heaven because I going to connect you know I, I will pray in your behalf and actually Muhammad he said that in the Quran Muhammad he says if you want to meet the Prophet which means Allah suppose he's speaking oh you will believe when you consult messenger of Allah in private spend something in charity before your private consultation so you guys if you want to talk to Christian Prince in the private you have to pay if I am Muhammad you have to pay me Muhammad me Muhammad 
you have to pay me as Muhammad money otherwise I will not talk to you in private anyone remember that Jesus refused to meet somebody unless he pay him first do you know how much money Jesus can make a person who can raise people from death a person who can make the blind see a person who can heal any any illness by a touch how much money he can make can, you can you imagine imagine if Jesus now he opened a clinic in this 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 uh, this, uh, this this miserable earth how many millions and billions of people they will attend the, the the clinic of Jesus healing is guaranteed perfect healing and it's for free Muhammad who healed no one who has no miracles yet if you want to speak to him in a private consultation you have to give him money there's a verse in the Quran and I don't know if any of you remember it where Muhammad he kicked a man because he is poor from his house the chapter of Abasa Abasa wa Tawalla there's a chapter in the Quran after 80, 80 verse number one it says that the prophet uh, uh, gave a bad face to a man who is this man he is a blind man but why what for the answer can be shown in the Islamic interpretation you see we don't use a Christian interpretation the Muslim they will say oh you know this is a Christian Prince interpretation is lying brother is lying brother is lying no I'm not lying my friend I'm not this is your tafsir and we will show it in the screen Muhammad was busy with a with a bunch of businessmen this is the book it's called Asbab al nuzul which means the reason for the verses to come down This is official Islamic government of the Kingdom of Jordan. Muhammad, when Ibn Ummu Maktoum, who is a blind man, he come to meet him. Muhammad was speaking to the highest men of the tribe of Quraysh, the rich men. He was meeting with Utbah and Abu Jahl, Ibn Hajj, Isham. And Abbas, etc. So they are they, they supposed to they are they, he is meeting with people who they are important, hoping that they will embrace Islam. Ibn, Ibn Umm Maktoum stood up and said, Oh Messenger of Allah, teach me of that which Allah has taught you. He kept requesting and repeating his request, not knowing that he is busy dealing with someone else busy dealing with someone else what does that mean well the guy is asking you teach me about Allah this is an answer should be a benefit for all of those he is trying to convince people to convert to Islam right so this is still in the topic he's, he's not a change in the topic but just because he is a poor blind man Muhammad he don't want to answer and he kicked him out of his house that is not a behavior of a person anyone who claimed that he is a messenger of God why a man who is a messenger of God want to do such a thing shall we go to Ibn Kathir and see what Ibn Kathir will say about this we can go to Ibn Kathir and try to find out in the English of Ibn Kathir, which is different always from the Arabic. But let us see, let us get them busted. This is Ibn Kathir, chapter 80, verse number 1. All right. Do you see it says here he was addressing one of the leaders of Quraysh, rich men, leaders, businessmen. 
is trying to make them accept Islam so Muhammad here in this verse and this is the Muslim interpretation saying that if you are a poor blind man Muhammad he will kick your ass and if you are a rich man Muhammad he will give you all the time you need because you are a leader Ibn Umm Maktoum who was from the earliest people to accept Islam yet Muhammad he kicked his ass and he was rude to him even the Quran confirmed that but somebody might say okay why the Quran reporting the story after Muhammad he did that people it, the same people who Muhammad was meeting them they start saying look at this guy he claimed to be a prophet of God yet he was rude with the blind man who believe in him you know what I mean because they witness this they witness that the Muhammad if he is a good man trying to convince us that he is a prophet of God how a good man he will do what he did to the blind man in front of our our, our, our eyes so Muhammad in order to uh, to wash his hands from being guilty he make a verse saying Allah says to me why you did that this is wrong do you see the evil of Muhammad he make verses supposedly God saying to Muhammad why you did that the Muslim they say to us Muhammad was the most noble person he was the most amazing person I never saw a noble person he will kick the ass of somebody he is a blind because that will be against his nature regardless if he is busy or not busy a blind man asking you you do that to him And actually, this blind man, he helped Muhammad to uh, fabricate Quran. If you remember, when Muhammad, he speak about that those who go for jihad. Muhammad was speaking about those who go to jihad. And Muhammad he mentioned that there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, certain people there is no uh, sin on them if they don't join jihad. Okay, but when Muhammad he mentioned that, Muhammad he forgot to mention the blind. Ibn Imam Maktoum he said to him, and what about us, the blind? <laughs> So Muhammad he added to the Quran right in the spot when the guy was just sitting next to him and we can show you the reference Which is proving Muhammad to be a false the guy he just said to you What about the blind If we go to the verse Chapter 24, verse number 61. So actually, this guy, he was a helpful for Muhammad. He, he made Quran for him. Or at least he gave him reasons to make verses. And this is why he added, there's no blame upon the blind, no blame upon etc. Because Ibn Umar Maktoum, this person, the same person, he is behind this reason. In different verse, Muhammad, he says the following. Read with me carefully, please. Of their goods, 
take arms so that you might purify them and sanctify them and pray in their behalf have you ever heard of a religion like this before anyone notice here what the, the danger what, what is the dangerous about this statement who notice let us see from you guys I want you to use to think with me what is the problem with this verse as you see this is not my translation this is not my website this is your Islamic website this is your Arabic this is your English everything is yours Muslims I have nothing to do with it what is the problem here anyone notice You can bribe Allah exactly, but how you can bribe Allah? He give us details. If you pay Muhammad, Muhammad not only uh, uh, he is a prophet, but he will pray in your behalf. Do you see it? <laughs> you do not need to pray no more. This money you give is going to purify you, sanctify you. And Muhammad now is going to pray in your behalf. So the money you give to Muhammad, you, Muhammad is in hire. You want to hire Muhammad? Give him money. You don't need to pray. And you are going to be purified. And you are going to be sanctified. And then he will pray in your behalf. If there is more clear proof that this guy is a scam, So imagine I say to you, if you give me money, you don't need to pray. That's it. I will pray in your behalf. Just give us the money. Obviously, this is a scam. Uh, we have a Muslim guy. He's saying, is this guy, is this stupid? Uh, Osman, answer us. Okay, maybe I'm a stupid. You are a smart. Osman, you are a Muslim and you are a smart. I never saw a Muslim. He is not smart, by the way. All of them are genius. But the point, they believe that there's in heaven, there's a woman, her ass is one mile. Obviously, you are the one who's smart who believe that God is a vagina vendor will provide you with 72 women and their legs is wide open like a victory sign and You will have a 70 years orgasm. So mr. Smart as long we are the stupid one and you are the smart one Explain to us why if we pay Muhammad he will pray in our behalf Do you know? Mr. Smart? Hmm? You are the smart one. We are not. I mean, what we can do? He see a lot of poor people will go to heaven. Uh, my friend, he see a lot of people will go to heaven. Uh, uh, but yet his his best friends all of them they are rich <laughs> he promised Uthman ibn Affan and he make him the caliphate after him because simply he is a very filthy rich who is the poor people Muhammad he bought he you know the Quran says look at this have you ever heard not only in Islam not only you can bribe God Allah can bribe you too if you are strong and Allah need you Allah will bribe you look at this verse Always those who claim to be prophet of God. I mean, they have to 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 make uh, some nice speeches. What they will say the poor people will go to hell. But obviously, he is always in the side of the rich. If you read this uh, 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 this verse, this verse look nice. Okay. And by the way, here it says, it says here in translation and to free the captive. It doesn't say that. It says here, Sadaqat, the arms is given to this and this and this and to the slave. Nowhere it says it free the slaves. Now, but look at this here. The one their heart need to be reconciled. Anyone knows what is that about? Anyone knows what this is about? 
Who here remember what we said before about this verse? Who is the one their hearts are to be reconciled? You believe it or not, Muhammad, he bribed people to convert to Islam. And this is written in their Islamic books, and this is in the Quran too. Abu Sufyan, he was a very important man, a war warrior. His family are very, they are criminals. Muhammad, he needed them. And actually, because of Abu Sufyan, Islam expanded. Abu Sufyan family is the one who occupy all the, the, the Islamic world we know today. Not Muhammad. So Muhammad, he bribed Abu Sufyan and his children. And he gave them hundred, at least a hundred a, a camel each and gold and silver. How we can prove that? We go to the interpretation and we go to the book of Asbab al Nuzul, chapter 9, verse number 60. You see, nothing from my own. Everything I show you is from Islamic websites, and I have nothing to do with it. I have nothing to do with it. Read carefully. And those who is their heart are to be reconciled so that they might become a Muslim. So Muhammad, when I give money, he is buying believers, he is buying warriors who they are fighters, the criminals, say, I will give you money. You see, I take money from people, but I can buy you too. I'm a businessman. How you can how you can make somebody heart go to Islam by giving him money it's a bribe so so he is saying here and those who their heart are to be reconciled so that they might become Muslims or that Islam might be firmly established so Muhammad is using those people to establish Islam Allah cannot establish Islam he needed their money he, he, he needed those people so now he is sacrificing money he's buying them and then their peers might become Muslims that might defend Muslims. You see, they are warrior, they are they are criminals. So they, so they will defend, they will they are fighters. And this is was Abu Sufyan family. If we go to the book of Asbab al Nuzul, this is a Jalalain. We go to the book of Asbab al Nuzul. Oh, in Asbab al Nuzul, not translated, it's gone. Cheese kebab. Bingo. You see? Read careful with me. Read careful with me. And those who their hearts are to be reconciled, give them gifts such as Abu Sufyan's and his companions. Do you see it? And they wear 15 men. 15 men but they they are you know they are in charge of many many men they are many fighters they are very powerful so abu sufyan and his gang abu sufyan and his gang muhammad he made them convert to islam by giving them money if we go to ibn kathir in english i don't think we will find too much details but let's try chapter 9 Verse 60. We cannot find anything. Ibn Kathir in English is gone. There's no Abu Sufyan story at all. It's Shish Kebab. Disappear. Yeah, we cannot find it as usual, you know. Uh, nothing, nothing new. Nothing new. Yeah. So Muhammad, he accept a bribe, and he will pray in your behalf, as we showed you, and he will sanctify you by giving him money. 
and Muhammad too he used money the same way he used money for his benefit promising you going to heaven he bribed people to convert to Islam and those who their heart okay he could not convince them to convert to Islam what he can do or give them money those people they like money so take money and convert to Islam now how Muhammad he is a prophet of God and how Allah is God except that somebody he will convert to Islam by money paying him money and that is okay you know what I mean unless this is a pure cult guys forget about Osman leave him alone he's just a kid focus with me try to learn something good for you what if I pay somebody to convert to Christianity is that really a real conversion that's fake that's false so what are, are we fooling God now so I give you money you became a Christian are you saved you're not saved you're going to go to hell actually me and you will go to hell now because you did not convert because you believe you convert because of the money so you worship the money that's why the Bible says you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve money and God so we have totally two different agenda and totally two different belief so those naive Christians who say to you oh Islam is Abrahamic is Abrahamic Islam is Abrahamic shame on you shame on you if Muhammad he used some names in his cult does not make him or does not make those names belong to him what if somebody 10 years from now he says I a Christian Prince he support me and he accept me but he is a big fat liar he can use the name of somebody people they like and this is exactly what Muhammad did he brought names which you like so he can make a delicious dish for you somebody want to put a poison in your food he will put it in your best food not in the toilet seat do we agree In order to put poison for you, I have to make you believe first that this food is good to eat. I'm not going to give it, put it for you in a piece of uh, uh, ugly, uh, all the cheese, the smelly cheese, you will throw it in the garbage. I will bring you the best of the cheese. I will bring you the best of the salad. I will bring you the best of the food you eat, you like to eat. And then I will put my poison there. So he brought the names which you like. He brought Musa, he brought Abraham, he brought even Jesus, supposedly Isa. And he brought Mary and he brought uh, uh, all the good names and he put them in his book so you can eat. Otherwise, Muhammad not only far away from Abrahamic belief Muhammad is anti Abraham At the same time we have tons of evidence that Muhammad he have no answer to debate those who debate him in his time as an example The Christian and the Jews, they did not accept Muhammad for a second. And because Muhammad is a liar, he have no answer. So how Muhammad he answered the Christians and the Jews? Using the name of Abraham. Let us show you this verse. Ye, people of the book, why dispute ye about Abraham when the law and the gospel were not revealed till after him? Have ye no understanding? Which means, are you stupid? Now, look who is a stupid here. Muhammad saying to them, You are debating me about Abraham, but you came after Abraham. But is it he is the last one to come? Here you notice that this is cannot be from God. This is from a stupid idiot who have a very low IQ. 
There's no way God here is refuting the Christians and the Jews because a stupid God only will say such a thing. If you are the last one, then how you come with such a logic? Ye, why you are disputing about Abraham if you came after Abraham, but you came after the Abraham, after the Jews, after the Christians, and based on your logic, you are the last one who have the right to dispute. You know what I mean, guys? Uh, Abbas is uh, saying, why Jesus, he said to the women, dogs, Jesus was quoting what the Jews, they say. The children of Israel, they say, don't cast your bread to the dogs because they insult always their God. Those are the Aramaic people. But for an ignorant like you, you are saying why Jesus says that. But why you don't ask yourself why Jesus, he said to her, bless your belief. You have a great faith and he did miracle for her. Why you did not ask yourself how Jesus, he accepted her? Why you did not say to yourself, why the women, even if she is coming to him and ask him in a miracle, nobody can do unless he is God. And as long you are against people to call somebody dog, why your Quran saying that we are the worst of animals? Hypocrite Abdul. The Quran call us all kinds of names. Najis, animals, worst of the creatures, evil doers, kuffar, uh, uh, pigs, monkeys, you name it. And then this little tiny creature, he is trying to say why Jesus said, dogs. Jesus was quoting what the Jews says. Here, look at this. If Muhammad is a prophet of God, and the one is talking here is God, there's no way God will say such a stupid statement. The one who came after, he have no right to dispute with the one who came after him. This is what the verse saying. But based on this, Muhammad is, is the last one to have the right to dispute. Jihad does not mean holy war. Uh, here we go. Okay, the one who says jihad does not mean holy war. Who is the donkey who told you that? Give me his name so I can get him busted. You know, I saw many articles that say jihad is your struggle with yourself, the struggle with fasting. That's a big fat lie. This is, yes, there is a mean, many meaning for jihad, but the jihad which Muslims will get a reward with is the one who do go and kill when somebody come with a statement there's one of two things will happen to christian prince either he will laugh at you or he will laugh with you at yourself The jihad which Muhammad promised the Muslims, the version 4, is going and killing anyone who don't believe in Allah. And the jihad have two parts. Either by money for those who cannot do go for war, or those who go physically and kill. Now, if there is anyone who dare to say I'm lying, please let me know. Actually, why we want to our time? We can get you busted immediately. Here we go. All right. Who is the best of man uh, of the Muslims? Who is the best of Muslims? Is the one who do jihad. But who is the one who do jihad? Let us see Muhammad. Giving us the definition for that. The one who strive in the way of Allah with his wealth and his life. What does that mean? Go down a little bit. He said, a man asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, which of the men is the best? He says, a believer who do jihad, the word here fight, fights is jihad for the donkey who said that, who fights seeking. Uh, is, is, is taking his life 
and expanding his wealth or spending his wealth in the way of Allah. This is what jihad. Let us see what the Quran said. We have tons of verses about jihad. Kill, kill, kill. Kill. Read this carefully with me. Allah has purchased. He what? He has purchased money again. Of the believer their life and their money their life and their money for their between two bracket in return is paradise they fight in his cause and they slay and are slain where is the donkey who says to us that jihad does not mean uh, to, to holy war where is that donkey who said jihad is not a holy war Put your ears up. You do not need to put your hand up. You know, you're a donkey. Put your ears up. Do you see how they lie to you? Is that a Quran or this is a Christian, Christian prince book? Not only that, Muhammad here, he confirmed that Allah, he purchased you. You are a property of Allah and your money belong to Muhammad and your life belong to Muhammad. Muhammad, he can do whatever he want with you. Well, we don't want to change the topic to talk about sex and jihad, but if you want to have it, tons of reference, you can go and get my book, Sex and Allah. All right? It's two volume. Have tons of reference about sex and Allah. Sex and jihad. Sex and Muhammad. Everything have to do with sex. But remember, I did not put in my book everything about sex in Islam. Otherwise, I have like 10,000 books to finish this topic. So I made them in two books, summarizing what and the connection of Allah and sex the same as we are talking here about some evidence of the connection between Allah and money if there is a Muslim he is a sheikh and he think he is not shaky to debate me please don't hesitate you can give us your Facebook post a challenge in your Facebook I want to debate a Christian Prince and post your Skype. We will call you immediately, not tomorrow, not next month, not next year. Is that fair, guys? Is that fair? If there is any shake, he is not shaked, terrified to debate me. If you have the courage and the knowledge, post in your Facebook. I make a challenge to Christian Prince. And for sure, your Facebook will verify who you are. Don't create a Facebook media today just to make this lie because there's some kids, you know. We want a verified page of Facebook for a sheikh who is willing to debate me. You post it there. You post it here for us. We check it out. We will call you. I will call you immediately. Just give us your Skype. Anyone there? Hmm? Fight for his cause. Why Allah he need to fight for his cause? Any Muslim can explain? Why Allah don't fight for his cause? Allah is God, right? If Allah he want the Muslim they say if Allah wants something he say be is going to be so what the point to here saying to 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 us to fight each other slain each other why you don't solve the problem your God if the purpose is killing the kuffar you kill them 
why your God Allah cannot kill us he need you to kill us because he is not exist this is Muhammad for in you Allah a long time ago he made a threat to people like me saying to them if you don't believe in Muhammad look what we will do to you what he will do to us a brother if you don't believe a brother in the Prophet Muhammad the brother Allah is going to erase your eyebrows and Allah is going to make your mouth uh, close and your nose is inside your head let me show you the interpretation chapter 4 verse number 47 Read Abdul. The proof that Allah He need you to force people to convert to Islam is in the front of you. Allah is a shish kebab. He made a threat to the Christians in the time of Muhammad, not in the judgment day. That if you don't believe in Muhammad, look what I will do to you. What I will do to you? Huh? I will erase the details of your face. I will transform their faces to the back of their heads by by the way my my face now in the back of my head just to let you know I'm sitting and my back is to the computer because now my eyes in the back and we will turn them into animals yeah all of us we have tails now different interpretation let's see a jalalain read carefully a jalalain Oh, you who giving the scriptures with me, Christians and Jews, believe in what we have revealed in the Quran, confirming what is with you of the Torah before you, or we liberate faces, erasing their eyes, their noses, and the eyebrows. And by the way, to be honest with you, in the other day, a policeman he stopped me. I was driving, and he says, Where are your face? I said, I don't have face because Allah he deleted my eyebrows and my eyes and my nose and my mouth, and not only that, he caused my nose to go inside out like naps of the necks or a flat plate and this is why i use my face sometimes to put rice in it like when i go to overseas they ask me do you have a dish with you i say no put it in my face it's like a dish a very clear proof that muhammad is nothing but a scam he threatened the christians in his time you be careful, you better believe in me now. Allah will do this to you soon, the same as he did to the Jews, which means he did it in the past, not in the it's not about tomorrow and the in the judgment day. This is now, and nothing happened to the Christians. Allah will make my nose inside. That's no, that's something. Look at this. A Muslim, he is posting for us this verse. This is the verse always the Muslim, they post for you just to fool you. This verse you posted from us, you idiot, it's about the Jews. Muhammad here is saying, he is quoting a verse from the Old Testament where the verse says, if a, a person, he killed an innocent man. This is from the Old Testament. And this is was for the Jews. Why Muslims, they love to lie. This is have nothing to do with you. It says there actually, and we order Musa's. Why you don't post the verse before it? This is for Musa's, not for you. And if we ask the Muslims, by the way, who is an innocent person in Islam? The one who killed an innocent person is the one who killed a believer. If you kill non-believer, he is not an innocent person. Liars, liars will end in fire. And we are here to get you busted. Right? Let me show you. First, by the way, this person, this liar, he did, uh, uh, he cut a, a part of the verse. Did you notice, did you notice that? Did you notice how he cut apart from the verse? He, he's a corrupt person. Muslims are corrupt people. Let me take a snapshot of what he posted us. And this is the verse in the Quran. 
he cut the part where it says we made it obligation for the children of Israel he cut that from the verse because he didn't want to show you that this was for the Jews not for him and Muhammad was quoting the book of the Jews do you see it this is a Quran why he cut that part why he cut the part where it says the children of Israel because this is the whole idea Islam is a scam why you don't cut, why you cut the verse this is the same verse where is the part where it says and we gave that law to the children of Israel because you are a liar Abdul, you cannot play with the Christian prince. I don't even play chess with myself. I will lose. And not only that, the same verse here is still when the Muslims explain it, they say you cannot kill an innocent person which is a Muslim. If a person, he is not a Muslim, he is guilty. There's an interview between, what his name, this guy uh, in... Uh, in, in England, England became the nest of terrorists. Uh, what his name? I forgot his name, the Pakistani boy. They made an interview with him in the BBC. He says, why you don't condemn the killing of innocent people? He says, yes, uh, uh, first of all, innocent people in Islam is Muslims. Go search it right now. No, not Ali Da. What Ali Da? Was? Ali is just a kid. And Dem Shawadri, yeah, and Dem Shawadri. He explained it. He is being honest. He says, "Killing innocent in the Quran mean killing innocent Muslims. If you kill non-Muslims, they are not innocent." The BBC guy, he says to him, "You must be kidding me." So, are you saying to me those who they are killed, etc., they are guilty? He says, "Yes, yes, they are guilty because they refuse to accept Islam." And this is exactly what their interpretation says. So they quote for you a verse to mislead you, to misguide you, and to fool you. And there's many stupid idiots out there. They are waiting for being misguided. Why you don't quote for me the verse after it? To show you the mercy. The only reward who make war upon Allah. Upon Allah, how you can wear upon Allah? Make war upon Allah. I am now. I am in war with Allah. What is the punishment for me? You know, when you see the word war, you think those people are fighting, uh, fighting, fighting Islam by like uh, taking sword. No. The second you say a statement against Muhammad, you are waging war against Allah. What the punishment? The verse after it. They would never quote this verse for you. We cut their hands. We cut their feet from opposite direction. We crucify them, and we expel them from the land. Have you ever seen a Muslim quoting for you the verse after this verse? They don't quote it. It's just the verse after it. This is the verse. And here we go. This is the verse after. Look what Muhammad said. Just to get them more busted. Yeah, this is what I say, that this verse was not for the Muslim. This is a quotation from the Old Testament. Uh, Muhammad, all those hadiths saying that I've been ordered to kill all mankind except Muslims. Do you see it? I've been ordered. Here they, they use the word translation fight. Well, fight what? By zucchini? Fighting by the sword. I've been commanded to fight all the, all the people. All people what? All mankind. Till they declare that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is the prophet and if they do that and they pray as we pray and they slaughter as we slaughter and they eat as we eat and they and and they face the Qibla as we face the Qibla and they pay the zakat and blah 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 all the condition and then and only then their blood and their property is secured from my hand do you see it so what is the war what war we are talking about here if you don't accept Allah 
you are in war with Muhammad if you don't accept Muhammad as a prophet you are in war with Muhammad even if you accept to say Shahada and you don't pray as Muhammad he order you he will kill you even if you say Shahada and you don't pray in the direction of the Qibla the Kaaba he will kill you if you don't pay the zakah, he will kill you do you see it is that my is that my statement is that my book look how many reference all of them they are sahih all of them they are sahih their blood and their wealth are safer from me Muhammad is nothing but a gang leader why their blood and why you want to take their wealth just because you don't accept to say Allah is God and Muhammad is prophet their wealth is insecure and their blood is free for you yes this is Islam not only that Muhammad he says that people they I was victorious by terror he is a terrorist from a distance of a month from a distance of what from a month I was victorious by terror in the heart of my enemy another hadith the Prophet says I have been given five things what Muhammad was given let us see what he was given number one he was victorious by terror he scared his enemy from a distance of a journey of one month do you see it do you see it Muhammad, Jesus was not given that Jesus if he come to your house you will be happy you are not you are safe and you are secure he will not kill you Muhammad you say the name of Muhammad people are terrified for he is a terrorist you see here they translate the word Rahab which means terror by Awi so I was victorious by terror from a distance of a one month journey you tell me what kind of a nice person he is to the point his enemy they hear about him from a distance of a month and they are terrified Now we go to the second part of our topic. Go back to the, to the money. Money is not only Muhammad he pay you. Money is how Muhammad he buy you. We showed you how Muhammad he bought the family of Abu Sufyan. But what about heaven? Did Allah promise us gold and silver? In heaven? And pearls and jewelries? Yes. Read carefully with me. Allah, He take your money now, but He promise you money later. Allah will admit those who believe and work righteousness deed, which means killing the Christians, killing the Jews, killing the Hindus, the Buddhas, the atheists, etc. To the garden beneath which rivers flow, they shall be adorned therein with a bracelet of gold and pearls and their garment made of silk God wanna give me bracelets made of gold that is money cloth is made of uh, silk that is money pearls and even the ground will be made from zafaron the ground in Islam is made from zafaron and jewelries in chapter 76 verse number 21 it says the following upon them will be green garment of fine silk and heavy brocade and they will be adorned with the bracelet of silver in the other verse Allah he made a mistake anyone remember what the mistake anyone anyone remember the mistake who, who noticed the mistake here between the two verses we just mentioned anyone remember there's a mistake clear mistake in the reward no one verse saying that you will have gold and the other verse saying it says a bracelet from silver correct 
one verse saying that Allah will give you a bracelet from silver this verse the verse before it Allah he says Allah will give you a bracelet from gold so which one here it says Asawira min fiddha bracelet of silver but didn't he say you will have a bracelet from gold which one Did you notice? Allah do not remember what his promise is. So in one verse he says the bracelet will be from gold, in the other verse the bracelet is from silver. And there's a huge difference between bracelet from gold and bracelet from silver. <laughs> and here you ask yourself, what is the value of gold in heaven? Hmm? What is the value of gold in heaven? What you would do with gold in heaven? I mean, this is the most stupid silly heaven ever. Imagine I give you a million pound of gold and then everything for free. So what we will do with the gold? And Muhammad, he says that in the heaven of Allah, your house is made one brick from gold and one brick from silver. If you have a software to do like, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, you know, the, the so software they use for engineering, like to design houses, try to build, to make a wall or a house, and try using your software to color the wall with two colors, gold and silver, because one brick is gold, one brick of silver. Okay, and see how ugly it's going to be. How comfortable your eyes will be to live inside such a stupid house. I prefer a cabinet or a cabin made from wood will be a lot nicer, so friendly, and I will feel like a human inside it. Being inside a box made from metal, that is not a house. Especially, it's a shiny wall, gold and silver. How disgusting. Let us go and see some description. We cannot find those hadith in English. Oh boy. Yeah, the embarrassing hadith, they will not be. Uh, let us show, let us show, uh, uh, let us see this verse in the Quran. Look at this description for the heaven. In the hell, there is no food. But in heaven, you will eat as much you want. And then Allah will make your face soft. You see the trans translation here is false. It says joyful. It's not, it's, it's a lie. It says na'ima. Na'ima. This is literally the translation. And they will be, you know, pleased there. The garden is so high. I like high garden. I mean, I don't like a low garden. There, nobody will do gossiping. And there, there is a, a spring of water running. But you remember the, the, the yesterday we spoke about two fountains. Now it's one spring. And the, and you will sit in a high throne. By the way, this is a translation. is false. It says, Fi sururin marfua, which means high couches, high beds. 
this is heaven I will have a high bed and then cups Allah will put cups for you there I mean have you ever heard of a heaven like this and cups like the translation let's change the translator this translation is uh, weird it looks like this guy is using a uh, software or something let us see uh, Here we go, see? And cups set at hands. In heaven, my friend, you have cups there. I mean, you enter your kitchen, brother, you have cups. Have you ever heard of God? He's promised me to have cups in heaven. That's God's talking. And brother, we will give you even cushions. And they are in rows. There is many of them cushions. A lot of cushions. Have you ever heard of a God that promised me a heaven have cushions? I mean, the one is, to, is talking there is God. This is Muhammad fooling those poor Arab who sleep in the floor. Hey, Abdul, I will give you a cushion. Are you a serious prophet? Yes, brother. I will even give you cups because those Arab don't have cups. The cups only is in the hand of the Persian and the Roman. Those Arab are desert people. So he promised them cups is even from a from 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 a, from, a, uh, 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 from a glass and carpet. You will have carpet, a brother. You will have a carpet. And look at the city Muhammad. Suddenly he jumped from. I will give you cups and cushions and the throne and beds and the flowing water. And then suddenly he says, "Don't you see how the camel is created? What does it have to do with the topic before it?" Guys, imagine I'm talking to you now about the topic, and suddenly I says to you, and don't you see how the camel is created? You will say to me, Christian Prince, what this? Uh, why you jump? You were talking about the cushions, the carpet, the furniture in the house of Allah, and suddenly you jump to speak about how the camel is created. What does this have to do with this? I mean, this guy, he have a diarrhea. He don't know what he's talking about. And then you say, "Don't you see how the 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 the, the, uh, the mountains was uh, uh, nailed in the ground and fixed firm? Really, it's fixed firm." And then he says, "How the earth he made it flat." You see, in the translation, it says, "How it spread out." It says in Arabic, "How he made it flat, sotihat, like a roof, flat roof." And yet they say to you, Islam makes sense and Islam is a religion. Islam is a, girl, a crazy is a cult. What is this? Look at this uh, one. Hold on. Let me show you this one. We mentioned that Allah will give you cups, right? Okay, read this one with me. You believe it that this is God talking? First of all, around you, brother, there will be boys. You will be reclining in your bed. Imagine that recline in your bed and you will be facing each other. I mean, look at this description. So, brother Abdul Shabir Ali will be facing the brother Shamsi. His bed is here, his bed is there, and they are facing each other. And then around them, they will be little boys who they are naked and they are so beautiful, like pearls, as in different, in different verse describe them. And then, and they will. Serve them, those boys, or around them, it will be cups and jugs and glasses. Glasses from a flowing wine. And you ask yourself why somebody want to commit suicide? You look at his life here, it's a disaster. 
he have to work go in the work you know work as a taxi driver or a truck driver and you know spend the whole day driving or doing concrete work to make pennies he kill himself he go there he will find all those boys naked around him and women opening their legs there's no panty and each time he have sex with her Allah he will make her her vagina brand new for him again and cups and jugs and glasses and he's you know wow that's amazing brother and even the fruits brother of what you like and by the way just to let you know in the heaven of Allah there is a great diet there's no beef there's no pork there's no lamb the only uh, 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 meat is allowed is a flesh of birds hmm? this is the open buffet of Allah only chicken no shrimp that's it but hold on actually somebody here what uh, David David uh, Kenwood he said something important guys the Quran says Allah will give you flesh of birds right but do you remember when Muhammad he says the first meal people would go and eat in the heaven what is this who remember who remember David he just posted who remember the liver of the whale right so Muhammad is a liar the Quran promise you only bird meats Muhammad he mentioned that in the heaven the first meal you will eat is the liver of the whale why the liver of the weight who knows Hmm? Why the liver of the whale? Six. Six. The the Arab they believe. That if you eat from the liver of the whale, you will become a porn star. Remember, now you are going to go to the heaven of Allah, so you need to be ready. So you eat the liver of the whale, your private part will become like hmm? Viagra. Thank you very much. And look, actually, this story here is the most hilarious story. A guy, he came to him. And he said to him, I came, brother, to ask you a question about the three things nobody knows unless he is a prophet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, he's asking him a question about three things nobody knows unless he's a prophet. But the guy, he know the answer. <laughs> because later he agreed with him. No problem. Nobody knows the answer for it unless he's a prophet. But the guy himself, he know the answer. Let it go. Firstly, what is the first portent of the hour? Secondly, what is the first meal of the people of paradise? Thirdly, what make the baby look like the father? And each answer is hilarious. And then Muhammad he says the first meal, etc. And then look what what make the baby look like uh, uh, the father. And if the man now he explained why that how the baby look like if the man this child proceed the women then the child resemble the father and if the women this child proceed the man <laughs> the child resemble the mother <laughs> and this is nobody knows the answer for it except uh, except the prophet brother this is why I, if I ever get married I will never have this charge first I don't want my son to look like me what a disaster Even I go to Walmart, everybody leave. Alhamdulillah. I enter a store, everybody's out. I go in the elevator, nobody there. Even the airplane. I am in, even the captain, he leave. Like the airplane is by itself. He, he, he hit the parachute and he, he flee. Alham, true story, by the way. This is a true story. 
so now you know how you can have a good-looking baby if your wife she is good looking and you are not good looking like me then don't have orgasm first Abdul first hello the prophet he knew his best You found the shake uh, let him post in Skype he uh, in the sorry in the Facebook that he accepted to challenge me and he, he, you know just give us his uh, Facebook and he can post there his Facebook uh, account and we will contact him hmm? Any Abdul heaven this is what proved that your prophet is a prophet because he believed that the first meal of people who enter heaven is a whale liver Allah will hunt whales Allah is doing fishing right now how many whales Allah he need how many whales Allah he need we have a 1.5 billion Muslims supposedly how many whales Allah he need to feed them and those are the one is alive so if we count those who die uh, you know since the time of Islam until now, maybe by now we will have 10 billion. We need a lot of wheels. Any Abdul? Yeah, but it, uh, yeah, maybe Allah will take that whale, the one who carried the earth. Yeah, good one, uh, uh, Andrew. Andrew, he says, maybe the whale which is carried the earth. You remember the story, guys? Who remember where we can find uh, the story of the whale who, which carried the earth? Who remember? Before I put it in the screen, who remember which verse is speaking about the whale carrying the earth? Noon, yeah, but what verse? What chapter? Actually, that chapter is it should be actually the chapter name should be chapter noon, but the Muslim they change the name, they make it Al Qalam with a pen. Noon, noon. It is one of the miracles of look at the translation, guys. Look at translation. Look at, look at, look at how, how funny. Noon is one of the miracles of Allah. Why? It's a letter, brother. <laughs> it's a one letter. This is a miracle of Allah. So if I say noon now, I made a miracle. Noon is an Arabic letter. You see here, noon is not really noon, it's just N N letter in N. Let me type it for you in English. It just this is what it is. What miracle of Allah, you donkey! But because they cannot explain it, it's a miracle, brother. That's it. This one says noon. In Arabic, when a letter alone, we give it like a name, so we call it noon. But it's a letter N. That's it. This is a miracle of Allah. Why is Allah the one who made this letter? But if we go and to try to find out what this noon mean, you will be really amused. Shall we go and see what noon mean? Just for the sake of uh, education. Chapter 68, verse number one. <clears throat> Now, if you are a person who suffer from dizziness or some illness, disease, you get dizzy, please don't read this uh, with us because you will get dizzy guarantee. Noon. What noon mean? Brother, Ibn Abbas is talking, the cousin of the Prophet himself. And from the narration and the authority of Ibn Abbas, he said, regarding the interpretation of Allah saying noon, noon, he says, Allah swear by noon, which is the whale that carried the earth on its back and the whale in the water while in the water and beneath it there's a bowl and under the bowl there is a rock and under the rock there is a dust and none knows what is under the dust save Allah here the knowledge of the scholars stop don't ask me more questions I do not know I could not go deep in the ocean more than this that's it 
My knowledge arrived to the dust. Under the dust, I do not know. Please don't ask me. So there is a wheel is carrying the earth. And who is carrying the wheel? There's a bowl. The name of the wheel is Lewish. And by the way, this is not Lewish Farrakhan. This is different Lewish. And it said its name is Lutaya. And the name of the bowl is Bahamut. And some they say that the name is Talahut or Liwana. The wheel in the sea is called Edward. And like a small ball in a huge sea, the sea is in a Hollywood rock whereby there is a far thousand cracks. Even the Muslims were able to count the cracks in the ocean before all the scientists. Look at this. They knew how many cracks down deep the ocean. How, how they knew that if Allah is not God, brother? 4,000 cracks. Abdul, the 4,000 cracks is in the head of the one who made this chapter, not in the ocean. And from each crack, water spring come out to earth. It's also said that noon is one of the name of Allah. Hold on. So we start saying that the noon is a whale and we err to we end that noon is Allah Himself. But two lines before it was a whale. Now they change it. And it's also said that it is one of the names of Allah. It is stands for the letter noon in the Rahman. And it's also said, are we done? No. Also say that noon is an inquiry. Like what the heck? So it was a whale, and then it became Allah, and now became an inkwell. Allah have an inkwell, in case you do not know. Allah swear by the pen. The, this pen is made of light, and it's light equal to the distance between the heaven and the earth. For sure, Allah will not hold a small pen. Are you stupid or what? His pen will be very big. Very, very big. Oh boy. How many of you feel like converting to Islam? And by the way, supposedly this is interpretation. This guy is explaining. Anyone understand anything now? Is it better before the explanation? I mean, after the explanation, now we are getting more disease. So which one is the one is the correct meaning? I mean, this is the interpretation, this is the explanation. And the funny the Quran says, Allah said that we made the Quran explain the Quran in great details. Are you sure? Are you sure you explained the Quran in great details? I can't tell, brother. Oh boy. <coughs> Do we have any Abdul have a a comment? He does I don't agree with us, something. And thus thus how we explain our ayat. Allah explained them. Are you sure? That's a hell of explanation. That's how we explain, brother. Hmm. This is how we explain them. This is how we explain our proofs. So you might know, brother. Hmm? Chapter 6, verse number 98. And this is how we explain details of our revelation. So if the Quran is explained in detail, so why Muslims you are making interpretation what nobody can understand anyway? Hmm? Any Abdul? All right. I think we will finish for now and don't forget please to download the videos if you like to learn more about Islam feel free you can go to Amazon and search for Christian Prince and you'll find the list of my books in all languages 
and remember for those who speak Spanish we have our book in Spanish already out for again for those who speak Spanish and we have in German we have in Swedish we have in French uh, and for sure uh, in English uh, so if you are a person who care to read and educate yourself uh, please feel free and get your copy now the reason we ask people to download the videos because we want you always to have reference and they are for free it doesn't cost you money it's for free all the time we give here is for free if there is something I can do more every day I give many hours of my day for you guys for free I lose my voice I spend my time this is a topic which for me very annoying by the way I don't like it but because there's nobody to replace me nobody can take my place somebody have to clean the garbage and that is me cleaning garbage is not fun but somebody have to do it otherwise all of us we will get sick otherwise trust me I am sick of this cult my head is a, 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 a library of garbage nothing useful but as you see sometimes even garbage is useful because many people they might be misleaded misguided and they've been fooled and to convert to Islam so I'm using the garbage which is in my head which is about Allah and Muhammad to save many people as I can so please help us download the videos share them it doesn't cost you money it just take a click post it in different place you can cut them pieces topic by topic like today we mentioned many things you can make them 15 minutes each or 10 minutes each it's up to you or you posted the whole thing together if you speak languages you can translate the videos the short videos make them short that will make it easier for you an easier project and add a subtitle any language you wish my friend don't make me feel that I'm wasting my time I'm here to educate you so one day you will not be left alone and one day I will die all of us we will die but your child he will go in the internet and there's tons and millions of people they are trying to hunt him down make him believe in such a stupid cult so what we do here is extremely important uh, if you see how many messages I receive from people who left Islam or people who are thinking to convert to Islam you will not believe it same time you will get the blessing if a person who leave Islam or a person who are thinking to convert to Islam and saw a video you posted even though it's my video but because you posted you receive the blessing of saving a human being life yes you do because it is you who posted the video there it was your hand who helped this person to be out of the ocean of hell so help us so you might help yourself you know many they say well Islam is far away from me what if your child come to you today and he heard a child in the school saying to him Islam is from the true God and he tried to fool your son what you will do how you can refute him how you can already he's brainwashed it's going to be too late so share your knowledge with your family with your friends even with your children's for sure each one of them depend in his age don't wait until the danger come explain what the drugs is not after what your child take a drugs explain what AIDS is not after your child is get infected it's too late what we do here is an extremely for your health and the health of your family and your society help us so the Lord will remember us in his book time will come and the Lord will ask me and you how many hours you spend a day in your life to serve me how many hours sadly many of us will say not even a minute me myself I have a lot of hours still I feel guilty I feel I can do more but I wish really I can stay and stay all day long talking but the more you get older and etc like you sit in behind the table I used to sit behind the table for 10 hours 12 hours 13 hours actually sometime even a day or even a day and a half non-stop 
but the the more older you get the more harder it get for you to sit uh, uh, it's not easy talking for many hours you will lose your voice after two hours max try it but the Lord is our provider and the Lord he give us strength and I would do as much as I can but still we need your help so you can be a person in his society in his community to transform the message into something good so thank you very much for being here I appreciate all those who support us either by coming here or even by donation or even by uh, uh, spreading my videos for by doing what we do we are helping the world to be better better security better economy how much money we spend because of Islam for security in airplanes your airplane ticket became twice double because they increased the tax due to the security billions and trillions of dollars are spent everywhere in the world because of Islam just for security and the airport alone so Islam making a huge impact in your lifestyle you spend now two or three hours waiting for the airplane before the airplane you have to be there two hours in advance at least so just for the sake of security check because of Islam we used to go to the airplane and nobody even asked us what you have in the back just before 9-11 so Islam is changing the whole system because now people they fear for the security even in China I went in China you know they they, uh, they have many incidents where uh, uh, terrorists they drive with their cars and go over the road and they kill as many as people they can even in China not only, not only in Germany not only in France so now you go to France you go to Germany you will see there's many roads or blocks you can't even drive your car through because of Islamic terrorism so don't think that this is a joke maybe it's funny maybe it's stupid maybe Islam is garbage in your mind but for somebody else this is a holy religion and he is willing to kill for the sake of his God so this is a very extreme dangerous cult in impacting your life your security your finance your business your work many people lose their jobs because of Islam after 9-11 almost all American airline companies went bankruptcy nobody's flying so be careful my friend this is not a joke thank you very much for being here and this is your brother in Christ Christian Prince what with you remember always that there is no better name than his name and they can they can hurt our body but they cannot kill our soul we are saved and he is with us and he is now listening to us every two who mention my name I will be between them he is right now listening we are the followers of the living Christ and they are followers of the dead Muhammad let the dead bury the dead and we are with the living God his name is a Christ he is our Lord thank you very much Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again bye bye